Hi guys, it's X. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to be discussing how to pick an MP specialty. It is something that I see all the time on a couple of nurse practitioner groups that I am a part of on Facebook. And one thing that annoys me is usually the main question is what is going to make me the most money? And personally, as someone who got into healthcare to help people, hearing people wanting to advance their career in medicine solely based off money as a motivator is just personally like a turnoff to me because I don't think that this is the line of work that you should be focused on when it comes to that. Sorry, the dogs are gonna be in the background distracting you guys. But yeah, I mean, obviously we all have to make money. Obviously we all have to <laughs> pay bills and stuff, but I just don't feel like if you are only choosing to become a nurse practitioner solely based on money, I feel like this video is gonna be a little bit disappointing to you because it's not much of a pay bump from the experiences that I have heard, especially with other nurse practitioners. So let's just get right into it. If you are simply becoming a nurse practitioner to make more money, it's uh, honestly, you can probably make more money as a travel nurse. I've spoken to many nurse practitioners who state that they took a huge pay cut um, when they became a nurse practitioner, or I've heard that you can just make more money by picking up like extra shifts ballpark range so i live in california um i've seen anywhere for new grads from 118,000 to 140,000 a year um there are some travel nurses during covid that made two hundred thousand dollars a year so that's why i bring that up because Personally, I am per diem. I will give you what I make um, hourly. I make $80 an hour. It's a flat rate. I am per diem at my place. I am a new grad. This is my first year as an NP. And I saw a job posted at a local hospital for a super float nurse, night shift nurse, and it was $96 an hour. And that is more than what I make as an NP. And as a registered nurse, I make $54 an hour at my um, re registered nursing job. So to be honest, if I wanted to, I could probably just pick up an extra shift or two and make the same amount of money. So I've heard a lot of people asking like what is going to bring me the most money honestly it just depends on your specialty i've heard from the grapevine that psych nps make so much money um but i don't know i don't know any personally i've just heard this through the grapevine but i have worked with a couple of nurse practitioners who told me that when they became an np they took a pay cut um from the registered nursing job so i honestly think it just depends because my regular nursing job right now i make like 54 55 dollars an hour but compared to someone who works at a bigger well-known named hospital they make about 70 dollars an hour and it also takes into consideration how long you have been a registered nurse. Um, when it comes to being a nurse practitioner, your nursing experience does not count. Uh, so they don't factor that in. Um, you can negotiate, but ballpark, I have yet to hear anyone tell me that they took a big, uh, like that they made more money as an MP. So that's why I don't think that you should, if you're, only solely going to school to be an MP for a pay raise, it might not happen. So I do have an example of when I worked part-time before I went per diem, when I first started, I was making $2,500 every two weeks. That's with taxes taken out. I was a W-2, was not a 1099. So that is something to ask if you are going to be negotiating for um, your salary is whether you're gonna be a W-2 and a 1099. I honestly don't know too much about being a 1099 employee. So I was glad to be a W-2 employee because I just didn't wanna deal with learning a whole new tax system and stuff i was just like oh just please take my taxes out and let it be done but um when i was full-time as a registered nurse and still had my mp job as part-time i was making the exact same amount of money so in three days at my nursing job my paycheck would equate to twenty five hundred dollars with the taxes and stuff that was taken out and then at my mp job working two days a week every two weeks my paycheck was also $2,500 so technically yes I made more money with one day less of work however 
when you factor in that now as a provider, I am legally liable and responsible and have to pay like malpractice insurance and my responsibility has gone so much higher. My, I don't know, like to me, the risk versus benefit is just not worth it. It was amazing to make the same amount of money with one day less, but my responsibility to the patient skyrocketed. So to be honest, when you take that into consideration that now you can be sued, you can, you're in charge of this person's care. You have to, you can't clock out when the time runs out. Like as a registered nurse, as soon as the 7.30 hits and you give report, you can leave. As a provider, the work doesn't stop until your work is done. So um, you also have to take that into consideration and also think like what kind of um, practice do you work in? Like, are you primary care where you are the only primary? You're not handing off, um, you know, your patient to the overnight team like if your work is not done in time are you taking it home versus someone like me who works in the hospital where yeah i can't go home until all my notes are signed but at least somebody's there to relieve me like i'm not going home and answering phone calls from um people nurses i don't know whoever's calling you at night to get orders so i think that is something you also have to take into consideration the setting that you're working with like when when is your work done like these are great questions to ask so let's actually talk about specialties, whether you're an FNP or you decide to do acute care or you decide to do psych or ER. Um, there is a specific designated um, ER program that I have seen in the past. One thing that I would definitely look at is first of all, see what path you wanna take. Then I would research your certifying body because that was something that I know I was not prepared for. I honestly thought that I would go to school to be a nurse practitioner, put it on the back burner. And then whenever I got burnt out as a bedside nurse, um, I would just go later on and, um, you know, be an NP if I felt like it. And that's just simply not true. ANCC actually has, I believe, eight different requirements, um, which I will name some that I can remember off the top of my head. You need 100 CEUs. You have to either be published. You have to research. Um, you have to or you pick like, I think two or three out of the eight. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Um, you can precept a student for I believe 120 hours, um, give presentation if I haven't said that already, but there is just so much more to renewing your license than just doing your 30 CEUs and submitting it. And I was not prepared for that. So I would definitely, if once you do pick your specialty, research the certifying bodies, see which one you're actually going to test for, and then make sure you know what the renewal requirements are because that I felt was like a huge slap in the face to me when I actually sat there and read it. Cause I was like, I'm never gonna be published. There is no way I'm ever gonna be published. I hate research, so I personally know I will not be publishing a research paper. I love precepting, so that is something that I know I can do, um, but there are schools who are very particular with what type of student you can take, how many hours and how long and then how much experience you have. So that's kind of what pushed me, or you can work um, one more other certifying um, thing was to work a thousand hours in five years. So that's actually what pushed me to get a job right away. I actually did not want to start being a nurse practitioner as soon as I graduated. I wanted to wait a year or two. Um, but then I realized like when I found out I'm not going to write research papers or present or anything like that, I was like, okay, well, obviously I can't precept a student for at least a year into my career because some schools at least mine required that the preceptor had at least two years experience and one year in their current position. So that was already an eliminating factor for me. Um, working a thousand hours in five years is honestly not hard to do. However, I thought about it and I was like, if I wait to get a job, further down the line from me graduating, one, who's gonna hire me, two, what if I forget what I learned, three, it's gonna be so much harder for me to find a job and maybe completing those thousand hours isn't gonna be feasible within those five years. So these are just things to think about if you didn't know because I didn't know this going into nursing uh, practitioner school. So how I actually uh, chose 
my specialty was at first things change in life and like this changed for me so before being and going into NP school, I wanted to be a mom more than anything in the world. And I just wanted to get schooling out of the way. So I thought about it and I was like, I just want to get school out of the way now so that I can have a baby. When I was first picking specialties, I was misinformed and I was under the impression that um, if you were an FNP, you can work in any field because that was the original um, track that they had. So I had actually asked a couple of nurse practitioners that I worked with at my trauma center, like, what degree do you have? And two of them had acute care and one of them had FNP. And the two acute care nurse practitioners told me I would do acute care or uh, FNP because you can work anywhere and it's dumb to like limit yourself. And then the one FNP that I did work with told me I actually wish I would have done acute care because then I would have learned all the skills and stuff and not had to learn on the job. So I was like, oh, okay, well, after considering this, I was like, it would be stupid of me to limit my skill set and like where I could work by doing acute care. So let me just do FNP. Well, then I took a legal class in my nurse practitioner uh program and found out that that's not true you can't work in like you fmp can't work at every single specialty you have to work what you're trained in so icu would be an eliminating factor for me if i chose the np route um now with the laws now that things have changed so that was a big blow to my plan and so then i really sat there and i thought about it and i was like okay if I work in a hospital, I'm probably gonna work 12 hour shifts. So it made more sense to me at the time to work to get my FNP. One, because I like one thing that motivated me to want to be an FNP was I had so many patients when I was a new grad on a step down unit um, that would say like, oh, I was healthy. I never went to a doctor and then um, now I'm sick. And like they have all these diseases that they just didn't know that they had because they didn't go to a doctor. Look at this girl climbing all over her brother. Anyway. Um, so that was like one of my motivating factors to be an FMP originally was like, I was like, I want to work primary care so I can educate the public and give them this education that they're probably not getting, I don't know. Um, so I really wanted to be like a patient advocate in that sense. And then thinking about it, I was like, you know what, if I really wanna be a mom, I think being an FNP would make more sense because I could get a nine to five job and it would just make the most sense. And then, I really sat there and I thought about it and I was like, ICU is my passion. Like if I really wanted to work primary care, I would and I don't. Like I love being in the ICU. So it was really something that I thought about. I called my school and I was like, what can I do? And they're like, you can change tracks, but you can only change once. They're like, or you can dual certify or you can, you know, do FMP. And then once you graduate, get a post master's in acute care which originally I was gonna do, but then I thought about it and I'm like, I don't wanna pay for two certificates. I don't wanna go to school for one more year after this. Like, I wanna be done. And then I'm like, do I really wanna be dual certified and not use one of them? Like, that's kinda dumb. I mean, it gives you such a wide variety of options, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't wanna do all that schooling and then not even use one. So I sat there, I thought about it, talked to my husband, talked to lots of people, and then I realized like, I don't know what clinicals are like in, in FMP schools. I don't wanna offend anybody, but I literally thought about it and I'm like, am I gonna be excited about coming home and telling my husband like, oh, I did a full physical assessment on a patient today? Cause that's in my head what FMP school clinicals are like. I don't know though, but to me, this is what it, it was. Or am I gonna be excited to go to my acute care rotation and come home and say like, I intubated, I placed lines, I did this. And that was just so much more, it just resonated with me more. It made me more excited about, and that's exactly why I became an NP to begin with was because I wanted to do invasive procedures and place lines and chest tubes and all this stuff, which was totally for the wrong reasons. I have that in another video, um, but that's how I ended up choosing becoming an acute care NP. And then, I don't know why, but while I was NP, in NP school, becoming a mom just kind of like 
went out the window. Like I just was so busy that I just didn't, I couldn't see myself getting pregnant anytime soon. And then it changed everything. Cause I'm like, well now I'm gonna be working in a hospital. Now I'm gonna do 12 hour shifts. Like I might be doing seven on seven off. Like I might be doing night shift. And I just suggest that you really think about it and do what makes you happy. Do not do what is gonna make you the most money. Do what you are passionate about. I would hate for you to go to work and do a job that you absolutely loathe or hate just for the paycheck. Like you don't wanna be a slave to your income. Um, I would prefer personally at this age in my life, this era in my life to go to a job that I probably make less money at, but that I am ex like, ex like happy and ecstatic to go to work every day. So, and that's what's exciting to me. Like I ended up becoming a trauma surgery, uh, trauma general surgery nurse practitioner, and I am happy. Like this is the field that I love. So going to work, even though sometimes it's super stressful, I enjoy it. So I highly suggest you really sit and think about what you like. However, now coming back to the future um, or the present time, one thing I kind of do regret was I almost wish I did dual certify or like almost wish I did get my FNP because I was like, now I want to be a mom again maybe like I'm thinking about it more and I was like man I could have done something easy like aesthetics like and I can't do that as an acute care NP I depending on your state laws like it, I find it so dumb but like I think I believe in the state of California like if you're an acute care nurse practitioner you can't prescribe Botox because that's a primary care thing you can administer it as a registered nurse but you can't prescribe it as an acute care nurse practitioner because it is a primary care thing. So you would have to be an FNP. So I almost wish that I would have just stuck to FNP. Um, and then maybe I could have worked ER. Uh, becoming an acute care nurse practitioner, like I do go to the ER sometimes, but I'm very limited. Like that's just when I see my consult, my trauma consults. But, um, sorry, my dog wants to come. Um, now I'm like, I'm limited to the age group that I see. Um, if I do work ER, there's only certain aspects in the ER that I can actually work. I have to be very careful about like the ages that I see. When, if I was an FNP, that wouldn't be a problem, but I believe usually they work in fast track, um, but I'm not 100% sure. So I think when you're gonna pick your specialty, I would really research it and really look at the laws. Um, the California laws are a little confusing because the California Nurse Practice Act states that an advanced uh, care nurse practitioner can't do more than what is out of the scope of practice for the nurse, registered nurse, which is very confusing because obviously as an NP, I prescribe drugs and as a nurse, I don't. So I don't know, it's just a little odd in that sense. Ultimately, at the end of the day, once again, I'm gonna reiterate, when picking a path for you, really decide, one, if you're even ready to leave the bedside and do this. A lot of people are under the impression that becoming, like nursing is a ladder, that you're like a CNA, an LVN, a, nurse, a registered nurse, and then an NP. There is no hierarchy here. Like becoming a nurse practitioner is not a next step in your career. It is not the next, it's not like the higher step on the ladder. It is a completely different job. Like the, the the job is very, very different. And I don't think people really understand that. If you're not a registered nurse anymore, you are a provider. Like you are the one making the care plan for this patient. So at the end of the day, the best advice that I can give you in picking an NP specialty is do something that you are very, very passionate about. That way you love and enjoy what you are doing. And thank you so much for watching this video. See you on the next one. Bye.